This tutorial is going to show you how to use the sequencer on drumbot.com. First thing you're going to need to do is open up a web browser and go to drumbot.com. Then this page is going to come up. You're going to want to hit the sequence button. This opens up the drumbot sequencer. I'm going to break down every element of this website so that you can use all of it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit reset, which totally resets all your projects. One, you've got your tempo buttons here. You can increase and decrease your tempo. I'll be showing that later. Tempo is written up here in that number. You can increase measures when you reset. It gives you one. Let's bring it up to four. In order to add instruments, we're going to want to hit these gray box areas, and this window is going to pop up. We can hit all different types of instruments. Kicks, snares, tom, other. Let's start with a kick. They give you different categories, electro, range, reel. Let's try an electro one. You click on the sample and it plays it for you. You can add sounds like that to your project by clicking the gray boxes to turn them blue. So for example, on beats one, two, three, and four, I'm gonna add an electro kick. Play your project by hitting the play button up here. I'm gonna add another instrument, a snare. Let's put that on two and four. And we have a basic drum beat. Can change my tempo. So they have a large variety of instruments. They have clicks, they have cymbals, they have hi-hats, kicks, which is the bass drum, other, which is bongos, clap, and shaker. So we can add shaker, for example, to our project. If I want to hear just one instrument, I can hit the I button, which solos it. Now it's only playing the kick. I can solo two instruments at a time. If I solo all my instruments, I'll obviously hear all of them. If you don't want to hear a certain instrument, you can hit the M, which is a mute button. Now I can't hear the shaker. The two levers over here are your volume and your pan. The one on the left is volume. So if I wanted to turn the kick up, it's going to play a little bit louder. If I wanted to turn the shaker up, I can turn the shaker up. I can turn it all the way down as well, so you don't even hear it. The one on the right is your pan. So this is going to put the sound in the left or the right speaker. If I put the kick all the way to the left, then it's only going to play out of the left speaker. You can't hear it too well here because it's playing out of my speaker, but when you're using this with headphones, you'll definitely be able to hear this. Before we get into this area here, I just want to quickly look at resolution. When you increase the resolution of the project, it creates a smaller subdivision for your project. Right here, before I had clicked that, my subdivision was in fours, so I could have 16th notes of any one thing. 1e e and a 2e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a. If I click the resolution button up, notice how a new space has been created between each of these. So now 32nd notes is my smallest subdivision. And I can increase that up to 64th notes. An important point to make is that if you decrease resolution, notice here I have 16th notes in the shaker. If I decrease the resolution to just be one beat, if I increase it again, I lose any of that previous stuff that I had that was in a smaller subdivision. So do be careful with that when you're working on your projects. You can create up to eight instruments and you can move them around freely throughout your project if you want to reorganize them. If you ever want to can an instrument, you can simply drag it to the trash can and it will get rid of it. So I no longer have the kick. If I'm all set with that, we can take a look at A, B, C, D, E, F down here. These are simply different drum beats that you can create. So I'm going to quickly create another drum beat in one. Now I can go to B and I can create another drum beat as well. And I'm going to pick some different sounds so it's a little bit easier to hear those other sounds.
now I can start using the sequencer. I can take project A, beat A, drag it into the sequencer, and I can drag it in as many times as I want. And what that's going to do is it's going to play project A. If I use the play button down here, it's just going to play A over and over again. I can then drag B into there, and it'll play A, then B, then A, then A. This is what really allows you to sequence drum beat. You can do that with up to six different beats. Another function down here I want to point out is the swing function. So if I take drum beat A and I have 16th notes here, let's play that. If I turn up the swing, it's going to swing the note, so it's going to make the first one a little bit longer and the second one a little bit shorter. You can put it completely straight and anywhere in between. This letter here is going to increase and decrease the resolution of your project so you can see more and less in your view. So if, for example, if I had many, many measures in my project, I could slide it so I can see, for example, all 14, 15, 16 measures at once if I had a larger beat or make it smaller so that way I can look at smaller sections of it. Then you can slide through to view the whole beat. The same with this one down here. It just allows you to view larger and smaller sections if you have dragged lots and lots into your sequencer, for example. Viewing all the project or not a lot of it. To use the save function, you're just going to save your project. Spencer's project. I'm going to save it to my desktop. An important thing to note is if you save your project, it's going to save it as a text file. So it's going to look like this. Now this doesn't look like music at all, but it's just the information that the program reads. If I reset my project completely, and then I hit open, and I open up that file, the program is going to read that information and I'm going to have that beat back. If you want to save the audio of your track and save it that way, you need to hit the bounce function down here and you can bounce your project. That's going to save your file as a WAV format. If you want to scrap an instrument, you can drag that instrument into the trash can and remove it. You can also remove whole beats by dragging them into the trash can. So for example, I have beat A here. If I drag it into the trash can, it'll totally go away. If you want to drag these beats into the trash can, ones that are in your sequencer, you can get rid of those as well. The last function I want to show you is what I like to call the target function, which is right down here, which can be really useful if you want to change a beat slightly in one of the other letters. So for example, if I have this beat here and I had nothing in B, so B is blank, A is this beat, all I have to do is pick A as the beat that I'm using and then drag the target to the next pattern that I want. And what it's going to do is it's going to make a copy of whatever is currently on the screen. So now I have A and I have B, which are identical. If I select B now and I add another instrument, and I now drag that to C, C is going to be identical to B. A is, of course, still going to be what it is. So that's every element of the sequencer in drumbot.com. I hope you have a lot of fun making some music.